Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. On today's episode, three great questions. One dealing with precious metals, another dealing with Roth backdoor IRA contributions, and the third surprise, it's going to be about setting up a real estate IRA. So really excited about today's episode and uh, let's get going. Question number one comes from Facebook. And this person wants to know, are precious metals IRS approved or IRA approved? So the question again, can you use your IRA to buy precious metals? Is it IRA or IRS approved? And the answer is yes. Internal Revenue Code section 408M is clear. Certain precious metals are not deemed a collectible and thus are able to be purchased with an IRA or 401k. So taking a step back, section 408 is the core section of IRAs. In 408M, there is a prohibition on an IRA investing in certain collectibles or a retirement account, including a 401k like art, baseball cards, anything collectible, gems, diamonds, antique cars, antique rugs. Also an IRA is not able to buy life insurance. In addition, 408M includes a section on approved precious metals and coins that are not deemed collectibles and are thus able to be purchased with a retirement account. And essentially in some, and you can take a look at the code, just Google 408M and, and check out section M. And in some, this is what it says. You can buy bullion bars, gold, silver, palladium bars, 0.099% finesse. You can also buy American Eagle state minted and bullion coins. Okay, so the IRS is basically saying this, the metals you're buying in order for not to be treated as collectible, needs to have a certain quality, a certain finesse level. So it is a real asset, not just a collectible, like a commemorative coin, right? I saw, um, you know, a client asked me if they can buy uh, President Trump. They have these commemorative coins out there that are going up in value. You can't because the finesse isn't good enough, right? They sell for like 10 bucks or 20 bucks. The quality is just not good. So it's not going to be deemed a approved metal. It's going to be deemed a collectible. Now, once you've satisfied the definition of an approved coin or metal, the code and also a recent tax court case, McNulty TV commissioner, is super clear. You need to hold the coins and the metals, not at home, not in your personal possession, but at a depository, in the physical possession of a trustee, which under 408 is essentially the, you know, a banker depository. Someone that is insured that can hold those assets for your benefit without you taking unfettered control or unfettered command over those metals. So that's super important. Number one is make sure you're buying bullion or coins of a certain finesse, 99%. And if you are doing that, make sure you do not hold those coins at home and you use a depository to hold those IRA or 401k owned coins. Second question is from YouTube. Can I do a mega backdoor Roth every year? So as of today, and I'm filming this first week of February, 2022, you can. Why? Because the Build Back Better bill has not been passed. In the Build Back Better bill, there is a provision that limits or basically prevents anyone going forward from doing a, mega, a backdoor Roth IRA. What's a backdoor Roth IRA? It's essentially a way that someone that earns more than $214,000 this year, married, filed jointly, can do a Roth IRA. Why? Because the regular Roth IRA rules say that if you make more than 214,000 bucks, you're ineligible to do a Roth IRA. 
But during the financial crisis of 2009, the IRS created rules that allowed a taxpayer to do Roth conversions irrespective of income levels. And this included any type of conversion, traditional to Roth and also after tax to Roth. Why? The IRS needed money. And conversions are a really way, good way of generating more tax revenue because you're getting people to prepay taxes. So they got rid of that rule. They haven't touched that in over 10 years. And in this version of the Build Back Better, which is technically sleeping, it will probably come back at some point in 2022. I don't think the Democrats will lose this opportunity with control of the House and Senate and the presidency. I don't think they're going to walk away from the opportunity to um, have some type of bill um, that has uh, certain programs that they feel strongly about. Maybe, hopefully, some of these IRA provisions will get kicked out, including a $10 million cap and the elimination of the mega backdoor IRA and a 401k in the backdoor IRA. So far, it's still in the bill, but the bill is dormant. So we're still able to do backdoor Roth IRAs this year. So if you want to do a backdoor Roth IRA for 21, do it now. If you want to do it for 22, do it now also. You can do six or 7,000 if you're over 50, irrespective of income level. So even if you make $20 million a year, even though you make over the $214,000 Roth limit, you can still do the mega or the backdoor Roth IRA by doing an after-tax IRA contribution and then immediately converting to Roth. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you have other pre-tax IRAs out there, there may be a limitation on how much of the after-tax IRA can be converted because there is a pro rata formula where you have to take into account all your IRAs and then what you're converting becomes a percentage of the overall IRA. So given this example hundreds of times, you have an IRA from 2017, 5,000 bucks, you want to now do a backdoor IRA of five, you add five and five equals 10. You want to do backdoor five out of 10, that's 50%. Only 50% of the 5,000 bucks you want to do a backdoor IRA with can be Roth, 2,500 bucks. The rest, 2,500 will stay after tax. You got to wait another year to keep going um, and, and get the rest into uh, Roth because obviously the IRS does not want you to be able to do the pre-tax to Roth without paying tax. That eventually needs to be done in a taxable transaction anytime you move pre-tax to Roth. The Build Back Better bill allows for Roth conversions, pre-tax to Roth for the next 10 years. Again, Build Back Better bill is dormant. So to answer the question from Facebook, I believe, is you can do them every year. You could do them in, for the last 10 years, every year. I have, um, but this could be the last year. Maybe, praying it won't be. Hopefully, um, Democrats just focus on what is super important to them, uh, whether it's child credits or um, child care, things like that, that I think a lot of the country is good for. Um, and hopefully they get rid of some of these IRA provisions, which probably are better left to uh, legislation in the ways and means that has a period of uh, discussion and comments and the real way to pass uh, retirement legislation without kind of just sandbagging, it, sticking it into a 2000 page bill where most people don't have the chance to really uh, comment on it and review it. So thanks for that question. Third question comes from Miles J of Wilmington, North Carolina. Miles wants to know, how do I set up a real estate IRA? So a real estate IRA is also known as a self-directed IRA. It's not a legal term, term art. It just basically means a self-directed IRA that lets you buy real estate. The only difference between a self-directed IRA and an IRA you open at Wells Fargo is the self-directed IRA lets you do alternative asset investments like real estate and cryptos. It's the same IRA. It's taxed under 408, same rules, same contribution limits, same distribution rules. The only difference is for the self-directed IRA, you can do alternative asset investments. Why? Because IRA Financial, the self-directed IRA industry, we don't sell investments. We don't give investment advice. We don't compete with Schwab and Fidelity and Vanguard. They sell investments. They sell mutual funds. They sell ETFs. They provide stock trading. We don't make money that way. So there's no incentive for Fidelity, Schwab, Vanguard to let you do alternative assets with your IRA because why would they? 
They don't make money when you pull the money out to buy real estate. They make money when you take the money you hold with them and buy their products, i.e. a mutual fund. So it makes no sense for them to allow you to do that. And they have every right in their charter as a trust company, a bank, a custodian of an IRA, they have 100% the ability to limit what their charter is and what they're allowing their clients to do with an IRA. That opens the door for the self-directed IRA industry, which was born under ERISA 1974 as IRAs were created. The only difference is we have a different business model. We don't, as I mentioned, sell investments or provide investment advice. We make money administering alternative assets, custodying alternative assets, and we have flat fees or most of us, and we charge a fee for providing that service. So if you wanna set up a real estate IRA, it's very easy. And I'm gonna obviously give you the IRA financial model because, hey, that's who we are. Um, you go to our app, you open an account, you have two choices. You can do a regular self-directed IRA or you can do a self-directed IRA LLC. The LLC is a very popular option for real estate investors because number one, it gives you limited liability protection, which protects your assets outside of the LLC. Real estate investors typically um, care about that. Um, number two, you have more control because you as the manager of the LLC can write a check or do a wire without involving the custodian, IRA Financial. IRA Financial is the owner of this LLC, the special purpose LLC, but you are the manager giving you a higher level of control and you're able to get things done quicker because you don't have to involve the custodian. So those are the three reasons. And I will also add a fourth privacy. When you make the investment, if you do it in a regular self directed IRA, the investment's made in the name of the IRA. For example, IRA Financial Trust Company, custodian for the benefit of Adam Bergman's IRA. If you do it in LLC, you call your LLC ABC LLC, the real estate would be purchased in ABC LLC's name. So it'd be much more difficult to find out who owns ABC LLC, which for real estate investors and, and trying to limit exposure to creditors, that's often um, worth their while. So there's two fees. There is a setup fee for the LLC. Um, and with if you just do the self-directed IRA, there's no setup fee. It's $360 flat. If you do the LLC, it's $999. We are giving $200 cash back. So it goes down to $799. That includes state filing fees. So if you're in Texas, that's like 300 bucks. So we're not making much money, honestly. We provide you an operating agreement. We get you a tax ID number. It's just a service we provide to give you the special purpose vehicle so you can do real estate, have limited liability protection, limit exposure, make investments quicker, have a bit more control, and also have a little bit more anonymity. Um, once you decide what you want to do, self-directed IRA or the LLC, no problem. You roll the money to us tax-free. Once we receive it, we notify you all electronically. Uh, then you go onto our app, fill out an investment authorization form, telling us basically to send the money to your LLC if you're using LLC. If you're doing a direct IRA investment into a fund or directly into a home, you'll provide us that information. We'll send the money to the closing, to the attorney, the escrow agent, wherever it goes. You'll buy the property in the name of the LLC or the name of the IRA. And the beauty of using a real estate IRA or a self-directed IRA to buy real estate is that all the income and gains will flow back to the IRA without tax. So if you bought the property for 100K, four years later, you sell it for 600K, 500K, no tax. If you rent it out and get $20,000 net of rental income, it goes back to your IRA without tax. If you have a Roth IRA, when you're over the age of 59 and a half, the Roth's been open at least five years, it's all tax-free. If you have a pre-tax IRA and you pull the money out prior to 59 and a half, it's tax and a 10% penalty. Over the age of 59 and a half, it's just tax. So you get the advantage of deferral, compounded returns. Your money should double every eight years, assuming you can average an 8% rate of return. You get to diversify, invest in a hard asset, great hedge against inflation, hopefully invest in an asset you know and trust. And you can do it directly through the IRA or indirectly through an LLC, giving you more control, limited liability protection, and anonymity. IRA Financial, we don't charge even wire or transaction fees. So you can do one IRA for 100 investments, right? You can buy real estate, cryptos, 20 IRA investments, real estate, tax liens, hard money loans, private equity, hedge fund, anything, one fee, okay? No transaction fees, no wire fees, 
no asset valuation fees, which is important. A lot of our, a lot of the competitors in our space, a lot of more of the legacy firms that have been around for 30 years or so, they charge asset valuation fees. So even though they're not providing you investment advice, they could be charging 1% of assets under their custody. So if you start off in 2004 with 100K, now it's worth 400K, you're paying 1% on that, right? It could be a few thousand bucks, if not more. We don't. Flat fees, we believe that's the right way to do it. Why? It's self-directed. You make the investment, not me. Therefore, we shouldn't charge you asset valuation fees for your smart investment decisions. You should reap those benefits. And we believe in that. And I think that's one of the reasons we've been super successful and have worked with some of the, I think, smartest investors. I learn something every day talking to my clients. Um, some of the strategies, even tax stuff that they come up with, super interesting. I love listening and hearing about the real estate investments they're doing, whether it's domestic, international, how they're structuring it. Some really, really cool stuff that I've learned a lot. And I think you know we've been able to help them structure things using an IRA or Roth IRA, or even a solo 401k if they want to take advantage of using leverage, because a 401k allows you to use leverage in a retirement account without paying a tax known as the unrelated business taxable income or a UBIT tax, which can travel as high as 37% on the net amount of the income associated with that leverage in an IRA, where it's exempted from a 401k. So that's why I think is the biggest strength of IRA Financial, besides our technology, it's really our team. Um, we will work with you to help structure an investment from a real estate standpoint. That's our core. That's what most of our clients are doing is real estate related. They may also be doing cryptos or private equity or hedge funds, but they have real estate exposure. That's our strength. And we will work with you to structure, whether it's an IRA, an IRA LLC, a solo 401k, the best strategy for you and your retirement account. So you can make the most tax efficient real estate investment you can with your IRA. And that's it. It's another ad mail in the bank. Uh, appreciate everyone from listening. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate uh, all the support. You guys have been awesome. If you have questions, send them in. Send them into info at IRA Financial. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, love to hear from you. I've got a lot of really, really good questions in the queue. So come back next week and you'll get to listen or watch me talk about three additional self-directed retirement questions. That's it. Have a great rest of your week and talk to everyone again next week. Take care. Thank you.